Hello, my name is Dr. Angela Ehianu, and I'll be taking you through the Narkoski approach to fatigue slash tiredness. This presentation is for educational purposes only. The agenda for today's presentation includes overview of fatigue slash tiredness, the Narkoski approach as a history and examination, and possible post-encounter questions like uh, differentials, investigations, treatment. So um, a patient complaining of fatigue or tiredness could mean one of the three I would mention right now. It could be perceived generalized weakness causing inability to initiate some activities. It could be increased fatigability, reducing the ability to maintain activity. Or it could be mental fatigue, causing poor concentration, memory impairment, and emotional instability. However, fatigue should be differentiated from somnolence, which is abnormal sleepiness, and muscle weakness, true muscle weakness, which is in which the strength of the muscle is less than expected. There are various etiologies of um, fatigue slash tiredness and cut across many systems, different systems. If you're thinking for the possible um, differentials in cardiopulmonary of notice, um, post MI, congestive heart failure, COPD, endocrine, diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, GI, malignancy, celiac disease, renal, chronic kidney disease, hematologic anemia, which is quite common, lymphoma, leukemia, autoimmune disease, um, infections like viral infections, HIV, tuberculosis, musculoskeletal, rheumatoid arthritis, neurological, cerebrovascular disease, myasthenia gravis, Parkinson's disease, psychiatric. You could think of um, depression, anxiety, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and others like um, disordered sleep, some medications, or pregnancy. So before moving on to how you would start your history, well, before you go into the room, after while you read your door post, you should have set differentials at the back of your mind, like the ones I previously went through. And so as you begin your history, you should note the age and the gender of the patient. This can help to, you know, shorten the list of differentials you have or narrow down the list of differentials. Usually the presenting complaint is fatigue. However, it is important that you elicit what exactly the patient means by the word fatigue. Um, note the onset, the duration, the pattern, the severity, aggravating and alleviate, alleviating factors, and the cause. You want to know if it's stable or if it's worsening. And um, you would want you need to note any associated symptoms because that can you know guide you towards the system in which is um. The pathology is, for example, if there's shortness of breath, you could be thinking, could it be coming from the heart or the lungs, like a congestive heart failure or COPD. The impact on life as well is very important. This is where your empathy should come in. The constitutional symptoms, not any constitutional symptoms like unintentional weight loss, fevers, night sweats, these all can point towards infection, cancer or inflammation. For the past medical history, note any history of chronic diseases, any history of cancer, um, any psychiatric illnesses. Um, for the past surgical, note any history of thyroidectomy because sometimes post-thyroidectomy, some patients come down with hypothyroidism. Um, for family history, note any family histories of cancers, of um, autoimmune disease, medication history, not any history of uh, use of beta blockers, benzodiazepines. These drugs have been known to cause fatigue in some people. And um, 
any new medications or those changes, any over-the-counter medications, and um, any herbals, use of herbals. Social history notes the usual um, tobacco use, alcohol, recreational drug use. Note any social stressors. Note if there is any um, recent history of travel or emigration. This can point to us an infectious cause. Um, Note any sexual history if it's relevant. So if you're thinking, could it be high, a viral cause like um, HIV or viral hepatitis? And finally, you need to review any system that has not been touched that you feel is important to review. Okay, and um, going to the physical examination, of course, you will start with um, the general physical examination. But however, your examination should be tailored to what the positives you got from your history. And so you know the general appearance of your patient, check for any um, abnormal vital signs. Um, in the head, ear, nose, and throat, you should note any pharyngitis, pallor, ptosis, goiter. For neuro, you should note any focal neurological deficits, any nystagmus, abnormal gait, tremor. For cardiovascular, note any murmurs, any displaced apex, extra heart sounds. For respiratory, note any crackles, wheeze, or dullness palpation. For the abdomen, or not any scaphoid abdomen, ascites, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly. For the dermatological, you note any jaundice, any rash that could point towards SLE, like um, photosensitivity rash, mala rash, um, any, um, you should also check for signs of um, chronic liver disease like um, palmar erythema, spina, spider nevi, any nail abnormalities as well. A musculoskeletal, you should note any muscular atrophy, wasting, clubbing. And um, psychiatric examination involves you doing a mental state examination. And so remember that your physical examination should be only the relevant things, the relevant positives that you'll be looking out for. So going to the post-encounter questions, like we've mentioned, we've gone through the, we've seen the possible differentials. And now, how would you investigate? Depending on what differentials you have or you've listed, you'd want to rule in or rule out. And so the possible investigations are as listed, laboratory, imaging, and others like colonoscopy, if you're thinking of, if there's um, anemia and you're thinking could be caused by a cancer. And treatment, you need to treat the underlying cause. And if the underlying cause is not known or is not found, even after various investigations and the examination, then you should think of possible um, causes like um, psychiatric causes like um, chronic fatigue syndrome or depression or even disordered sleep. And so you, the general approach would be to counsel this patient and introduce some lifestyle changes as listed. And any pharm um, for pharmacological, if you're thinking depression, you could do a trial of SSRI or use of hypnotics if you're thinking it's um, insomnia. And of course, you need to refer for psychotherapy or group therapy. Thank you for listening.